chapter B with your Monday lesson. I hope you guys had a good weekend. So what we're going to be talking about today is electrical circuits. So we're going to be building and going back to that website that you used a few classes ago with the conductor uh, lesson. And so we'll go over a little bit about electrical circuits uh, and then you guys will have an opportunity to build some and fill out some uh, worksheets about them. So uh, what do you think an electric circuit is? Well, an electric circuit is a complete chain uh, that allows electrons or electricity to flow through it consistently. So conductors allow electrons to flow through and this is essentially a full circuit or a full loop or a full lap uh, that the electrons can consistently pass through in a uniform fashion. So as we go on from that, so we will be building electrical circuits and again I'll go through uh, an example of this with you guys and you guys can be creative with how you put them together but there are some elements that you will need to include to make sure that you have an understanding of the overall idea. So today you and your partner, so that can be your parents or your sibling, uh, will be building some simple electric circuits and what we'll talk about later is what elements make up a simple circuit. It's the minimum requirement in order to be considered a circuit. Uh, it's important to take care. This is more if we were doing it in the classroom. The only thing that applies will be the worksheet. Uh, because we're doing it online, you can be a little bit more not delicate with the uh, equipment because you're not going to break it unless you break your computer, which would be bad. So uh, the equipment that you guys will be using is uh, some wires, some light bulbs, uh, the light bulb holder. Again, you won't have to worry about battery and battery holder and then a switch. So uh, aside from the switch, the minimum elements that you need to build a circuit are uh, some wires, uh, some sort of thing to power, whether that's a light bulb or a fridge or a phone or whatever it has, but it needs something that needs power and then it needs a power source. The switch is an added element. It doesn't need to be included, but it does help us to build and control the flow of electrons through a circuit. Um, you will need to create two circuits in this activity, in this lab. So one circuit that will have a switch and then one circuit that will not have a switch. Uh, and that'll be all that you have to do for this lesson. So here we will go over here with this. So this is just showing you the different parts of a circuit. And this is what you will attempt to recreate on the website. So you need a source of electrical power. So in our case, it will be a battery. Uh, a conductive pathway, so something that allows electrons to flow through it, so a wire in our case, an electrical resistor or a load. So that's a fancy way of saying something that needs an electrical charge in order to operate. So again, your TV, your stove, your fridge, that would be considered a resistor or a load. In our case, it is going to be a light bulb and then a switch, again, not a necessary component for a simple circuit but one that's usually included because it allows you to control the flow of electrons through the circuit and so we will get to use these uh, in your buildings today um, and this is called a knife switch so that's because you kind of bring it down like that almost like a drawbridge connecting or disconnecting the circuit this could be a light switch for you guys or anything like that um, but for us they call it a knife switch so when you see that being talked about that is what they're talking about they're just talking about a switch that looks like this so as we move on this is the worksheet that you guys will have access to so you're going to draw the simple circuit so this is where you're going to draw the circuit that you created on the website and this example includes the switch so when you're drawing when you're redrawing this one make sure that you have the switch included in your drawing and then describe what happened when you assembled the simple circuit try to explain what happened so what you should have when we go to the website is you should see the light bulb light up when your circuit is complete and then you're just trying to explain why that happened as scientifically as you can so talking about the flow of electrons why sometimes a light bulb is on and not on and stuff like that like why the electrons are able to flow through and then for your second example, you see now that the knife switch is not included. So this one will not include a switch. So your circuit will always be lit up. And again, just explaining why that's happening. The second time is not as important because you've already explained it once and the process of why it lights up doesn't really change. 
but this one would be more so explaining why you can't control the flow of electrons. Now it would have to do with the removal of the switch that we no longer have the control to turn it on and off at will. The only way we could do that is if we're cutting a connection for the circuit. Uh, additionally, I've also included for you um, some electrical symbols. We get into this a little bit later, but all of these represent parts of a circuit. So that goes into a little bit of explanation about what an electrical circuit is. This symbol, as it's showing you here, represents a battery. The giant X marking the spot talks about, uh, represents a light bulb. And then the black lines all the way around represent a wire. We'll talk a little bit more about electrical symbols and what they, all the different ones represent, but we're not quite ready for that yet. All you need to know are the basics. You can draw your circuit like this when you're talking about the diagram of the circuit up here, or you can just do your best to artistically recreate what the light bulb looked like, what the battery looked like, or you can keep it very simple and just use these symbols to draw your circuit. Finally here, the last page that you guys have access to before we get to the uh, lesson and the website that you will be using for today, as well as some of our other lessons coming up, is a simple circuit that looks like this. Again, you're seeing that the switch is not included in this one because again, it's not a necessary element to a simple circuit. It gives you a little bit of an explanation here in a simple circuit. There are three to four items needed, wire, battery, and light bulb, the fourth item being the switch. Um, again, it's the movement of charges. You also need a load that uses electricity to do so. And then it goes on to talk about an open and a closed circuit. So an open circuit is something that is not working. It is a circuit that is not currently powering the light bulb. And that's because we've lost the connection between because of the switch. So you can see here that there is a gap in our circuit, which means that the electrons do not have a complete loop to flow around because the loop has been broken with the addition of the switch, which allows us to sometimes power objects and sometimes not power objects. Just like in your house, when you go to bed at night, you turn the lights off, that opens the circuit, which prevents the electrons from flowing through. And then when you want the lights on in the morning, you have to close the circuit by turning the light switch on, which completes the connection, powering our load, or in this case, our light bulb. So. That's all that you'll need from these. Again, these are all of the sheets that you're going to have access to. The two assignments that you are doing are this, the creating a simple circuit with a switch and without a switch. So before I sign off, I am going to go over the website with you guys. I will include a link to this website on your uh, list of things that you have access to. Again, the two different options, you have an intro and you have a lab. Either one works. The lab is a, has a little bit more equipment, but the intro one is all that we really need for our purposes. So once again, you've got all of your items here, your wire, your battery, your light bulb, your resistor, which could be used in place of a light bulb. We're not going to do that just because it's a little bit more uh, complicated and we're not quite there yet. Um, and then you have all of this stuff. So last time you were on here, you were using these as your conductors. Feel free, feel free to include those if you want. But again, we are just creating simple circuits. So when you're drawing your diagram, you shouldn't have any more elements than what is listed on your worksheet. So as much fun as it may be to play around with that, you don't need uh, too many additional elements. So one other thing that I will show you that's neat. So here, remember, we need a light bulb. We need a power source. And depending on which one you're working on, we may need a switch. I'm going to show you one without a switch uh, and allow you guys to work on the one with a switch. So again, you want to connect these red circles together. And then you'll know that it's connected when it turns black. So you see my example here has turned black. So I'm going to take my other red circle and draw it to the one end of the battery, which we now have another connection here. We don't quite have our full circuit yet because there's no connection from this part of the light bulb to this part of the battery. I'm going to extend, connect there. I now have a black circle. And now I will complete my simple circuit by connecting there and you can see the flow of electrons. And so this would be an example of a simple circuit 
without using the switch. So one thing that I will show you guys, I'm not going to show you how to create the one with the switch. I will leave that open for you guys. But again, if you want to disconnect anything, you just come hover your mouse over top of the black circle. You click down on there and it'll give you a scissor option. You click on the scissors and it disconnects your circuit. So now I no longer have a complete circuit because there is a gap. One thing that I will show you guys, we talked a little bit about, and I showed you some examples of some uh, symbols that are used when building electrical circuits. Right now we have the symbol here. We also have this option. If I click on this option, it'll change it from the physical pictures of the elements to the electrical symbols. Now, they represent light bulbs a little bit differently than what we did on our worksheet. This is also a representation of a light bulb. So kind of almost looks like a Pokeball from Pokemon. Um, so you can have it look like that. It'll make your redrawing of the circuit easier. Or again, you can leave it as the symbols. Now you'll notice that those light elements disappear. You know that this circuit is working though because you see these little negative signs flowing around the circuit on their own. So that should be everything that you need. If you guys make a mistake at any point and it's too much to click and cut, you can just come down to this little circle here that will reset you to the beginning. Uh, if you guys have any questions or need uh, help with this website, send me an email. Other than that, have a great Monday and I will see you on Wednesday.